glad to know you all are still right there with us if you are tuning in this is real talk with kike on the second segment of the show we are taking a summary view of the electoral process and the voting exercise that took place in edo state in view to credibility freedom and fairness we have dr festus okoye the national information commissioner media and voter um education he will be taking us through the whole process and how INEC was able to conduct a successful election in the state. Again, thank you so much, sir, for staying with us, Dr. Festus Okoye. We are glad to have you in the studio with us. Uh, thank you so much. All right, sir. So, um, before, we, before we go ahead, let me use this opportunity to open our phone lines. Please join us by calling the phone line 0700-923-923. And, of course, you can send us a message on 0817 three one three six one nine let's hear your perspective of, of the topic at hand if you have questions for our guests please go ahead and hit us with a question again thank you so much for joining me today sir so the logistics issue of distribution of materials deployment of staff and challenges in the voters registration were significantly reduced that is according to the cables news i hope i'm accurate how did the electoral achieve this improvement if i may ask Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, basically what we did was that um, we did what we call strategic deployment. Okay. Uh, um, and we also deployed it speedily. Okay. Uh, the, a month before the election, uh, we had deployed all the non-sensitive materials. Okay. Uh, by non-sensitive materials, we mean uh, voting cubicles and um, other materials that are not um, uh, of high security nature. Okay. Uh, so all those ones we are distributed and back to what we call registration area level. Or, okay. or, or what? Uh, so they were already in the local government uh, a month before the election, and then um, on the 14th of um, of, of September, uh, we moved in the sensitive materials mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, 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 ballot uh, 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 ballot papers and resource sheets mm -hmm. uh, into the central bank, mm -hmm. and uh, we also engage in what I call a, a policy of uh, inclusiveness and uh, consultation mm -hmm. uh, with the political parties and the major stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, and we agreed on the modalities of uh, inspection and the modalities of distribution mm. of some of these materials. And uh, uh, that was why we uh, were able to achieve uh, uh, a near seamless um, uh, deployment and distribution process. All right. Thank you so much for that submission. You know, everything I've been hearing since is about strategy and, of course, getting better at what we've been doing in the past <coughs> few years. But, you know, the INEC must be commended for conducting a fair and free election thus far the appraisal of local observers have passed good remarks on the election so can we say or can we conclude our electoral process is mature and worthy of global commendation well, well, well uh, I, will, I, I will not uh, in all honesty um uh, draw such a conclusion yet okay uh, this this is because um uh, democracy and the electoral process are, are works in progress. Mm. Uh, we, our promise to the Nigerian people and our commitment to the Nigerian people is that for every election we keep on improving and we keep on learning and also uh, looking at our mistakes, looking at our weaknesses and plugging some of those loopholes and some of the, those lacunas as, as, um, as we move ahead. One thing we have done and one thing we will continue to do mm. is to deepen the use of technology in the electoral process. When you deepen the use of technology in the electoral process, mm -hmm. you reduce to the barest minimum mm -hmm. uh, human interference and human interface in the, in the process. And that's exactly uh, what, what we are doing. As of now, you know, for, for, for the commission, uh, every election is like a football match. Mm -hmm. The moment you finish a football match, win or lose, you prepare for the next match. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we are doing. As of now, I am um, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission. You can on those cities in Akure. On in uh, what we call a, a readiness assessment, mm. and I'm also in Akure for readiness assessment. And so we are looking at our processes and our procedures to make sure uh, that um, we plug some of the loopholes, uh, some of the weaknesses we notice with the governorship election, uh, despite his success. All right, thank you for that submission. Uh, again, you know, the incident of votes buying during the elections was high and I called for a more effective enforcement of election laws um that prohibits votes buying and other election offenses so which is oh, I, 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 what's it called according to clement uh, um, a situation reporter 
So how do we how do we how do you think we should curb the election offenses or how do we want to curb the election offenses going forward? You know, you know, my my my, my position relating to the issue of vote buying mm. uh, is sli is slightly uh, it might appear pedestrian and pedantic. Mm. But in every situation of uh, vote buying, mm. vote selling, mm. there's a willing buyer and a willing seller. <laughs> I have I have been in bully units before mm. where the vote buyers uh, came in mm. and the, 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 the vote sellers abandoned mm. voting and the pulling unit and rushed after the uh, the vote buyers. Mm. But so so more it, it, it's more on the moral side. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the morality of the issues involved and also the enforcement of the issues involved. Uh, the the commission as it were has the power to organize, undertake and supervise elections. Mm -hmm. We don't have enforcement powers and we don't have enforcement me enforcement mechanisms. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we have done basically is to re recalibrate our pooling unit and make sure that we protect the sanctity of the vote. We protect the sanctity of the voting cubicle by making sure that people vote and they don't expose the way they vote. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we have also admitted um, the ICPC and the ESCC into our interagency consultative committee on election security. Mm -hmm. And they were able to deploy uh, plain close security officers to the pooling units mm -hmm. uh, or to some of the pooling units. And they were also patrolling uh, to make sure that um, the vote buyers and the vote sellers uh, keep away from the pooling units. But it's a work in progress. Um, we will keep on uh, uh, persuading uh, because the moment you sell your vote mm. and the moment you buy a vote, you diminish the quality of the vote. Mm. You diminish the sovereignty that is embedded in the vote. Uh, so we we'll keep on uh, urging our people uh, to shun uh, vote buying and vote selling and uh, allow the will of the people to be the major determinant of who governs them. All right. Many thanks for that. Uh, we have a message from Ayobami Okonlawo. He said, Good evening, Real Talk with Kike. Commendation should be given to INEC and every other agencies involved in the election process in Edo State, including the political parties involved and the people of Edo State, for a quite credible and peaceful election. Congratulations to Governor Obasekibo. Whether this will be the end of Godfatherism in Edo politics or not, only time will tell. So that was um, a message from Ayobami Okolawa. You know, I, I can't help but ask this question, you know, because I know due to the power of dominating party influence, many people thought the election would be rigged to favor APC. However, there was nothing of such. How did you manage the possibility and the expectations or the expectant or expectations not uh, uh, not rigging the election process? You know, you know, um, uh, the the commission has no political party. We don't support any candidate. We don't support any party, and we don't pander to the uh, whims and caprices of any political party. Mm. As far as this, the commission is concerned, mm. there are 18 registered political parties in Nigeria. And the 18 political parties please can you kindly hold your thoughts sir we have a caller on the line hello what's your name and where are you calling from please good evening my name is Ladi. i'm calling from adidi okay what's your contribution today yeah i think i want to comment INEC and other stakeholders involved in the election at least i can give INEC a pass mark they have done well but they still need to improve because the largest room in life the room for improvement mm. for example they see they still have some problem with logistics in some polling units, they started late mm. in the election. And mm. also security problems, too. In some places, some, mm. like for example, some of the INEX staff were shot by the gun. Mm. And also some some observers, too, mm. were shot. So they still need to improve on security mm. and some logistic problems. And they also need to work on the vote, vote trading, because there was vote trading in the elections. So they need to collaborate with either ES and ICPC on how to solve the issue of vote trading. All right. That's Thank you so much for your contribution. So, sir, talking about the possibility and the expectation of not rigging the election, what's your thought on that? Well, well, uh, well, uh, well, well my, my whole idea is that um, uh, we, we only follow the process. We make sure that we get our processes mm. and our procedures right. Mm. And when you uh, do inclusiveness and uh, consultation, mm. uh, you, you, will, you will not go wrong. Mm. Uh, so our processes, we are in the open. Uh, we are consultative. We are inclusive. Mm. And that's uh, what was going for us. Mm. But more fundamentally, 
we made sure that we trained our presiding officers and assistant presiding officers and, and survivors well. Uh, but I completely agree with the last uh, caller mm. uh, that in a few of the polling units uh, we experienced uh, less staff. And, uh, and uh, we have reviewed the circumstances leading to the late commencement of polls in some of those polling units and we attributed it to, to just three things. One, uh, in two of the registration areas, mm -hmm. there was a misunderstanding between uh, the, the ad hoc staff and the electoral officer uh, in relation to the payment of their training allowance. Then, uh, some of the bus drivers that we normally use uh, mm -hmm. for deployment to the police units arrived late. And then, um, uh, some of the police officers also did not arrive on time mm -hmm. uh, to escort our, our officers to the police unit. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we have reviewed these situations and uh, we have um, identified uh, some of the loopholes and, and had to overcome them with the uh, on those governorship. All right, thank you so much. It, yes. All right, thank you so much on that. This will definitely be my last question to you, you know. Taking a cue from the last caller that called talking about logistics, you know, based on logistics and preparedness of the electorate and, um, uh, and, and the planning, especially when it comes to synergy within the police force and the INEC and the other uh, agencies to work together, you know, what should we expect in the forthcoming election in Ondo states? Well, as, as I pointed out when we started, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in Akure now, the chairman of the commission is here, mm. almost all the directors of the commission are here, mm. uh, the, 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 the uh, national commissioners are here. Mm. We are going to deploy six resident electoral commissioners at the fourth break for mm. this election. And mm. we're also going to deploy three national commissioners mm. to make sure that we get our logistics right mm. and also to make sure that we work collaboratively mm. uh, with the Nigerian Police Force and other security agencies uh, uh, to ensure mm. good deployment, good security deployment, and also make sure that we protect both our um, uh, 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 election materials, election personnel, and the voters in this election. And uh, so we recognize that there were challenges with the two elections, and we promise the nation that with the on governorship election, we are going to improve. All right. Many thanks for that submission, Dr. Okoye. It has been an honor having you on the show to share the background process and underground um, efforts of INEC. And I will say more power to your elbow. You've been doing a wonderful job yourself and your team. And I pray that um, the process of um, Edo State's, uh, uh, what's it called, win, will also transition to the coming election in on this day. Thank you so much again for your time, for sharing part of your evening with me, despite your busy schedule. I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. So our closing remark, remark, Kotsi Omoluabi, personality from Goldberg, is voting is an exercise of conscience and power. If you, we should um, endeavor to allow our conscience guide us to what is right and give our power to whom will give due diligence to what we seek for. So, this is where I draw the curtains of the show today. Till I come your way next week, my name remains Hikelo Matondao, and you have been on Real Talk with Hike. Bye now.